today I want to take a look at the instrument that changed my musical life, the Eurac Modular Synthesizer. I've been playing synthesizers for more than 20 years now. I came from multi-track recording. I used Cubase, I used Logic, I used Pro Tools and in the end I used Ableton Live. And I built the tracks brick by brick, layer by layer until you get this lovely Lego thingy that you've assembled with the mouse and clicks and the keyboard. But with the modular that all changed. Music making became from a process of layering to something that's more keen to building statues out of air and throwing them around in space. Everything can be everything, and everything is connected to everything. Very much like musicians playing a show together in a concert, listening and reacting to what the others are doing. With control voltage, you can do that in an electronic instrument. In this video, I want to show you some of the techniques I use with the modular by breaking down a typical patch. Let's have a closer look. I've started with modular in 2011. And I was always obsessed about the idea of a single instrument that I could play live and learn. So each case is an instrument touching on different aspects of modular synthesis. The upper case is a West Coast modeled analog synthesizer using mostly the old Maleco weird modules, the gargoyle versions. The modulation and sequencing heart of the setup is the joystick axis generator. This takes two voltages, combines them, and turns them into 10 related voltages. So from only two signals, you get a huge amount of modulation possibilities. I send voltages from the jack all over the system. This creates a network of relationships that makes it easy to move in a patch and to change and play it. For this patch, I use a clocked random source from the noise ring and a pitched CV from the Moskva. Two of the outputs of the jack go into two intelligent U-scale quantizers. This way I get chromatic pitch information from the more varied output of the jack. The Döpfer A151 sequential switch also takes two inputs from the jack. It's routed to the transpose end of the U-scale so I can get more varied sequences. That pitch information feeds the weird oscillator. This oscillator has a phase modulation function, so you can modulate the phase between the different outs. Again, I use one out of the joystick axis generator to modulate the phase. This gives me a whole lot of different tones from a single oscillator. So I mix two outs with the Intelligent Unity Mixer, run that into the double undo by the Harvestman, which acts as a VCA and envelope, and run the whole thing into the ADEC 702 filter. Here I'm using the built-in fuzz on the high pass and blend that with the low pass. I throw in a bunch of modulation and that gives a wide range of timbres. The second hue scale feeds one of the anti-oscillators, which runs into the Borg filter that is hidden behind the patch cables here. I'm using the Borg in low pass gate mode with resonance engaged. This results in lovely liquidy tones. The baseline is handled by the second anti-oscillator running into the boogie filter. The boogie filter is a mixture between an MS-20 and a Moog filter and it has a thick creamy character which is perfectly suited for bass. I'm running both the Mayhem out and the Triangle out of the anti-oscillator into the boogie. Because the Mayhem out might lose some bass in its farther settings, but the Triangle out compensates for that. The 
Harvestman Piston Honda Mark I provides an eerie resonance as it runs through clouds into the Schwemann DMF2 filter. I sequence the wavetables with the pressure points brains combination you see in the lower case. And also the joystick axis generator. To create the rhythms of this patch, I use the noise engineering Solaric Repetitor. This is both a clock divider and a source of interesting patterns. Additional harmony generation comes from the noise engineering Tonets Sequent. Drums and the main clock are provided by the Roland TR606. I'm using the trigger outs for clock and I run the machine into the Schwemann DMF2 filter, which I modulate with maths. I run the whole patch through a Chase Bliss Warped Vinyl Pad because it adds a nice boost in the lower mids and can morph the signal into something more lo-fi. Because I don't have long enough cables to go from this side of the studio to my mixer, I use these knuckle bones by Hosa. On the mixer, which is an old Allen and Heath mix wizard, I add an echo from the Dynacord VRS23 to the modular mix. And I record everything onto this Telefunken M15 quarter inch tape machine. And here's the unedited performance of this patch.
I've made two more tracks with this patch, changing only a few details, but resulting in vastly different music. Check them out here. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for listening and see you next time.